Welcome to another edition of Dialogue in the Word. We're excited um, that we could be together another day. Of course, it's another day that the Lord has kept us. He's kept us from all danger with our minds stayed on Jesus. Um, I trust that your day has been good, that um, the Prince of God has been upon your life, that you've been able to meet all the challenges but thrown at you this day. And it comes near that they feel with the goodness of God and gratitude that he kept us. We're going to um, uh, start with this dialogue in the word. The underlying theme has always been, um, now that you're saved, now what? Or so you're saved, now what? The idea is this is a sort of an equipping ministry. Um, we don't count the we apprehend it, but we press to the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, always striving to get a little closer, to know a little bit more. And so I'm, I'm striving just like you, I'm seeking just like you, and together uh, we can bask in the glory of God. Amen. Um, let us uh, bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Lord God, our Father, we thank you for these moments of sharing. We thank you for those who join us by, by YouTube, by Facebook, by whatever means. But God, we know it's you that have orchestrated our footsteps that have brought us together tonight. Even though we may be apart and distance, but God, make us together one in spirit as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one even to our friends in Sierra Leone, that tonight this word may join our hearts and minds together. We may see God together, may glorify God together. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So call your friends, um, get your Bibles, get your cell phones, or however you join us. Um, it's a very simple word. We're going to revisit... Um, this idea of developing un an unshakable faith. Uh, I want to revisit this idea of developing an unshakable faith. Amen. An unshakable faith. I tell you, life can throw some curveballs at you, can, can throw some harsh situations that come right out of nowhere. And you don't see them coming, they don't seem to be a provocation, but bam, they're right there. But God wants us to be prepared. And so we develop this unshakable faith before the storm that may be able to endure the storm. Um, as we look at uh, this unshakable faith, we began talking about it uh, um, last week very simple foundational principles that I want you just to grasp in your spirit that we can meditate on it together, all right? Um, nothing complicated, but very simple, okay? Because I know that you're probably um, doing many things as you're listening to me tonight, but I pray that this will um, settle in your spirit. Is that all right? Okay. There are certain foundational principles that I think have been good for me. Um, I don't know how long you've been on the journey. I've been on the journey quite a while. Like I said, still haven't mastered everything, but each day gets better with Jesus. The challenges come when we're learning to rest in his word, all right? Um, there are... There, these are these are about four, what I call four foundational principles for developing an unshakable faith. Okay, number one is that we must know, be shot of a shadow of doubt, that God loves us unconditionally. Okay, said because God loves us unconditionally. And then number two, we must. Um, Come to grips with that God is our Father and we are His children. Okay, number one, God loves unconditionally. Okay, number two, God is our Father 
and we are what his children. And number three, God is a provider, okay? And number four, God has made his provisions available to his children, okay? These four things for me are foundational principles that, that help steady my faith, okay? Number one is that God loves us unconditionally. God loves you and I unconditionally. Number two is that God is our father and we are his, what, children. And number three, God is our provider. And for God has made his provisions available to us. Um, as I said, it's been one of these kind of weeks this week, too. Life throws many challenges at us. As often without warning, they just seem to come out of nowhere. Okay? Matthew 7, verse 24 and 29, uh, the paraphrase tells us, when we build on a firm foundation of Christ, we can withstand whatever comes our way. A foundation based on God produces steadfast faith in life. It tells us when we build on a firm foundation of Christ, we can withstand whatever comes our way. A foundation based on God produces steadfast faith in life. Okay? In times like these, we need an unshakable faith. There's a, there's a song that says, make sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. This solid rock is Jesus. And so the, the beginning point of all of our discussions is that in this unshakable faith, understand that everything begins with faith. Even our very salvation begins with faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Okay, is a gift of God. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that they that come to him must first believe that he is and that he is a reward of them to diligently seek after him. It says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Biblical faith is more than believing. You can believe many things, but biblical faith is based on the object of the belief, okay? Biblical faith is based on our belief in the word of God, belief in what God says, is that, is that in faith, in the, in the face of whatever may be going on around us, we believe what the word of God says. Without that kind of faith, it's impossible to please him because we must what first believe that he is, and that um, that 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 he's reward of them to diligently seek after him. Now, let's go back to this first premise. As we build this unshakable faith, the economy shakes. Coming into election season, it's hard to tell what December or January will bring for us. Things in economic upheaval, there are battles, skirmishes all around the world, through parts of Africa, Ukraine and Russia, powder keg, Iran about to explode, uh, European economy about to collapse. And if you're not anchored in Jesus, you will surely lose your mind. Amen. And this is to help us. Number one, number one, number one. Always remember this. God loves us unconditionally. Okay. In John 3.16, it says this. Everybody know it. For God what so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who shall believe on him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Now that's really a action-packed verse. I want to uncover it just a little bit. It tells Nicodemus, a ruler of the synagogue, who knew law but did not know Jesus, came to him by night. He says, he says that, marvel not that I say unto you, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Okay. Except for God so loved the world that who shall believe on him should, but should not perish, but have everlasting life. God does what God so loved the world. God so loved the world, okay, that, that he gave his only son that those who believe him should not perish. What God, when you say God so loved the world, we're not talking, well, this too, we're not talking about the created earth, stars, etc. We're talking about the people, the populace of the world. In particular, we're talking here about the lost world. The flesh, for God so loved the world. He so loved those who don't even love him. God so loved the world, okay? And so, he has a challenge. God so loved the world. God so loved the lost, okay? That he made a provision that they not be lost anymore. So what he does through the death of his son on the cross, he takes us from the world to what? Become kingdom citizens. He takes us from the world by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And brings us into his family. Amen. God so loved the world. We're all lost. But God so loved the world that he made a provision that it can bring us from just being creatures of the flesh to born again, adopted sons and daughters, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who shall believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God's love is unconditional. It's not based on, we can't earn it. He just loves us like that. Now, but this is what happened. God loves us unconditionally, but when we accept that love of God, it changes us uh, exponentially, I may say. Let, let's look at Matthew 25. Is it 25? Let's see. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Uh, Matthew's Gospel. Bear with me here. Here it is. It says in Matthew chapter 22, and beginning at verse 36, you know it when I get there. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus says unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. When God loves us unconditionally and we accept the unconditional love of God, it changes us exponentially. He does not make us love him in return. It's that unconditional love, okay? that changes us inwardly and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. When it pregnates our heart and minds, just how much God loves us and just what he's done for us, then the, the natural response that should be that we love the Lord thy God with all, all thy heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. But here's another, another part to it. And he, said, and he says, this is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God loves us unconditionally. Just, 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 just accept that. 
God loves us, and you don't earn it. He loves us unconditionally. When we accept him as our Lord, he moves us from being just creatures of the world system to his sons and his daughters, okay, his children. Now, because this love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, the the proof that we've accepted this unconditional love is the type of love that spontaneously we have for him. What is that? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. It's desire to have nothing between my heart and him, nothing that occupies my mind above and without him, nothing that occupies my will or my soul, my emotions, that he's not first in. Now, the second part, love the neighbor. So if you really love, if God loves us unconditionally, our response is to love him with, with, with all of our heart, all of my heart, our soul. But also, it's also to love what he loves. Mm, mm. If you love him, then we love what he loves. We cannot have the love of God in our heart, and yet we hate what he... What does God love? God loves the lost. Loves his sons and daughters, but he also loves the lost. Did he not leave the 99 in the parable and go and seek out the one that was lost? Where is your passion for the unlovely? For those who are caught in all kinds of, uh, of, of passions, inordinate passions, can you love those also? They said, love the neighbor as yourself. And I often wonder what does that mean? Doesn't that mean just going down the street, who's next door? In this sense, it really means this neighbor is anyone that you have access to. That's your neighbor. Whether you have access to them by way of media, whether you have access to them by way of uh, living, a way of just communicating, way of talking, way of, way, of, way, of, way of working together, way of sharing together, that is your neighbor. Okay? So this love just pours out. God loves us unconditionally because not his desire, then it should perish, brings us from the world to his family. And when it is family, we act like family would like. We love Father, Father loves us, okay? We love what Father loves. Father loves neighbor, we love neighbor. Father loves loss, we love loss. Now, the second thing, you have that, the first pillow is, what? Believe that God's love is unconditionally. Nothing will ever change that. Nothing. Even though life may put you in a place where you don't even like yourself. But God will always love us. And that love will continue to draw us. The second thing is, he is our father and we are his children. Mm. He is what our father and we are his children. Let me show you what God showed me. Each of these births into the body of Christ, into the family of God, are planned births. There are no accidental pregnancies in God. Okay. Our, our birth in him was planned for before the foundation of the earth. Okay. Now, God is our Father. We are his children. We were not accidents. Okay? We were not accidents. In this life, sometimes an accident. We were not a slip. It was planned. Okay? He had not a word planned for, but he had a purpose for each of us. Okay? He planned our birth, the time of our birth, and he has a purpose for each of his children, okay? 
He birthed us because he has a purpose for us. Okay. And the second and the third thing is he knows each of us by name. He knows each of us as if we were the only child he had. Billions upon billions of children. But he knows each of us as if we were the only one. He knows the uniqueness of us, what makes us different one from the other, of what we can stand and what we can't stand. And he loves us just like that. Okay. We are his children. Okay. We carry his name. Our name is identified with his name, children of God. Let me give you the principle. When Jacob's name was changed to Israel after wrestling with the angel, okay, his offspring became Israelites, children of Israel children of Jacob. When we're born again, we're children of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We carry his name. We can, in fact, use the name of Jesus as if it was our own. We carry his name. Our name is identified with his name. He's not, now once you catch this, he's not an absentee father. God is not, you can't see him, but he's not absent. He never leaves or forsakes. Always near, always uh, uh, accessible, never too busy, always excited and loving to hear us. Okay? He will never disown his own. Okay, now, first thing, what was it? God loves us unconditionally. Because God loves us unconditionally, our response then is to love is to love him with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, or to love what he loves himself. Okay. And second thing, we are his children. He is our father. We carry his name. He's not an absentee father. At uh, our births were planned for, our names were planned for before the foundation of the earth. He has a, a, a desire for each of his children. And he will never disown us. No matter how low we may fall, how dark the pit may we be in, everybody else may ah, cringe to be around us, disappointed with us. But this father will never disown us. We cannot fall too low to where he won't be there with us. We cannot become too dirty where he's totally disappointed and done with us. God is a father. He never disowns his children. And that's where it's saying amen. Somebody say amen on that. And number three, God is a provider. Okay. Now, if God is our father, let's sit up here. If God is, and we're his children, then guess what? If he's a good father, and he is, God is a provider. It's his nature to provide. He would not have children if he was unable to provide for them. He would not have children if he had not already made provisions for them. When you're planning a family, okay, you make provisions even before the child is born. And so God is a provider. It's his nature to provide, okay. He would be Less than God if he had children and didn't provide for them. Not only is God a provider, but he makes his provisions available to his children. Okay? God is a provider, and he makes his provisions available to his children. God is a provider. So he's provided everything we need for both now and eternity. As we grow in him, we need to learn how to access those provisions that he has provided. Did you know you don't have a thing in your life that your father have not already provided for? And sometimes you've got to ask him for it, but he's already provided for it. 
if you, if you have a child, you don't really, early on, you're trying to put away provisions for his college education. God already had plans for how he would educate us. Not, not necessarily the schools of man, but how he would educate us in wisdom, how he would uh, develop us through what means of instruction. Okay. Now, now, he makes his provisions available to us, okay? Makes them accessible to us, okay? Now, how do we access those provisions, okay? This, where I, this is where our faith must be unshakable now. An unshakable faith knows that God is a provider, God is a protector, God is always there. We bear his name. We're identified with him. He's always near us. And so that should bring us, but an unshakable faith, okay? When we know the love of God, okay, is unconditional. He loves us no matter what. It's unshakable when we know God as Father and we know ourselves as children. We know his, we have an unshakable faith when we know he is a provider for his household. In fact, he's head of household, okay? Our faith is unshakable when we say that from the foundation of the earth, he's already made provisions for us. And those provisions are accessible. Now, it's about finished. Just a couple minutes. How do you access those provisions? Through the word. God does everything through a word. We were preaching on Sunday that, um, what is Psalm 107, verse 20? God sent his word and healed. He was just an example and delivered them from all of their destructions. Everything God does, he does through a word, okay? When he made the world, it was done what? Let that be through a word. Um, when, he, when Jesus spoke, spoke to people who were sick, it was through a word. And we have the word of God in the word of God that I'm reading right here. <clears throat> now, how do I access it? When I'm trying to, when I'm communicating with God, I speak, to, I speak to God through prayer. God speaks to me through word. When we pray to God, God answers us through word. Ha. When we pray, God answers her. A word comes in our spirit that addresses our condition. Now, how do I receive that word? I confess that word with my mouth. And as I confess it with my mouth, I begin to believe it in my heart. And then it's manifested in my life. And so God communicates through a word. I confess that word for my provisions. God supplies all of my needs. Let's deal with that. According to his riches and glory, okay, which Paul vouchsafed for those who supported him. I confess that word with my mouth. I believe that in my heart, and then I accept the provisions of God. I am healed by his stripes. I confess that word. Lord, I thank you because I am healed by your stripes. You have borne my sorrows and carried my griefs. I confess that, and my spirit man hears that and processes that, and heaven moves on that word. Now, how do I share that word? See, God not only provides for me, but he provides for the whole earth. He provides for our neighbors. He provides for those who do not have. How does God, how do we, how do we, how do we provide for others as God does? Okay, now, for me to receive it, I confess it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart. That's for me. Now, when I want to convey that same blessing to somebody else, I do what God did. What did God do? God believed it, so he spoke it. We believe it, so we speak it. I speak it into the life of those, this word seed that God has directed that want to see blessed through this word. I speak it. 
I speak this word that I've already seen through the word. Now as we're, now we're closing here, we're closing here. Because we're together tonight, I want to speak blessing into you. God has provided all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your whole heart and mind and soul through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the peace of God, which means nothing missing, nothing lacking, wholeness, completeness, relationship with God. I speak that word into the hearing of all who are with me tonight. Maybe you have a sickness in your body. I speak this word. According to the word of God, your cancer is healed by his stripes. Your heart issue is healed by his stripes. Your burden is lifted by his, by his burden bearing. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church say, amen. Speak blessing to others. Confess the word for your own healing and deliverance, whatever it happens to be, and watch God move. Unshakable faith. Know that God's love is unconditional. Number two, know that God is our once. He gave his only begotten son that would become from being world flesh to being his children. So God is our father. We are his children. God is not an absentee father. God God has planned each of our birth into the kingdom. He has a will. He has a desire for each of us. And not only that, God is a provider. What kind of father would he be if he didn't provide? And he had made, he made available having gained access to all that he's provided. And all that he's provided we can find in his precious word. Holy Spirit, bring to our mind that which we stand in need of. We may glorify God as you move within our hearts. Lord, bless us tonight. Keep us as only you can. Uh, God, we praise you. We thank you. For you're awesome. You're magnificent. We are your children. You are our Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord God, be glorified. God bless you.